Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA of a Hyperborean. This man lived in the Middle Ages in the far Arctic Siberia at a latitude of 71 degrees north. For comparison, the latitude of Oslo is 59 and the Arctic Circle 66. In this person's habitat, energy is crucial to conserve as during the winter the sun does not rise for two months. Living in the Arctic tundra can make a man very hardened. In this video we will explore his phenotype, traits and GED match results. This is what he looked like with my Nashakot tool. He is predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose and black hair. As you can see I depicted him here with very small eyes, but I think I should have depicted him with even smaller eyes, judging by how Inuits and these kind of Eskimos tend to look. Uh, with Snipper Free he is predict predicted to have brown eyes, intermediate color skin and black hair. Uh, he was heterozygous for BH1, he did not have BH2 or BH3 or BH4, so obviously had very dark colored eyes. And he actually had some of the derived variants in MC1R, some of the uh, ginger, ginger related variants. In the Pro Fernetin Pro variation of DRD2, he did not have the European no-go learner mutation, which is no surprise here because it's a European mutation, he's not a European. And in TAC1 variation of DRD2, he had a 1A2 genotype, which is heterozygous. Kind of an interesting genotype because most humans tend to be A2A2, whereas uh, monkeys, various apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, Neanderthals, they tend to be A1A1, so this is kind of an ar archaic genotype here. Relative to the A2A2 genotype, this genotype would uh, confer an increased risk of Parkinson's and ADHD. In Comte's Valmet variation, he's got the warrior genotype, which is Valval, uh, which is a non-European genotype to have, and the implications of this is that he's more stress resilient which is kind of useful in this kind of environment. He, he's got derived OXTR, which is what I call the sociopath gene here on my channel, and he's actually got the European mutation that protects against myopia, which is, I think, a very useful mutation to have if you live in the Arctic because it's dark all the time, you need to have good vision. He did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is no surprise. Um, he was definitely a lactose intolerant. No surprise here because these kinds of Eskimos, far northern Arctic people, they don't... They don't have cows, they don't have uh, cattle herding there. Obviously, you cannot, no cow would survive in these conditions. And he also had uh, the genotype in Act 1 that increases the risk of paranoia when smoking pot. Obviously, they weren't, none of his ancestors were smoking pot up there in the Arctic, so why would they have a mutation that protects against paranoia for this, right? Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a very high risk score for Crohn's disease. Um, he's got a high risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, he's got a pretty high risk score for coronary heart disease, um, he's got a very high risk score for brain aneurysm, uh, he's got an average risk score for type 1 diabetes, uh, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, he's got a very low risk score for schizophrenia, he's got a very high risk score for stroke, and He's got a pretty average risk score for asthma and a very low risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Kind of interesting here is that he's not scoring a lot of Amerindian. Uh, and I would expect somebody that's this close to Inuits and um, Eskimos to be more Amerindian. And with the Oracle here, he's actually closest to Yakuts, which is also quite surprising because Yakuts are a lot more southern. They live a lot south of where this person is. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Yevank plus Bangladesh or some kind of a South Asian. And Yevanks are uh, also Arctic people of Arctic Siberia, right? This is what he scores with Eurogenes K36, mostly Siberian, but there is some Near Eastern and South Asian, which is interesting. And uh, with the map for Eurogenes K36, as you can see, he's most similar to these people in Northeast Siberia. I'm not sure if those are Yakuts or somewhere else. And in America, he's most similar to uh, kind of Greenlanders rather than Native Americans in Central or Southern America. This is what he scores with MDLPK23B. He's mostly East Siberian and Tungus Altaic here, although he has some ancestral Altaic as well. And with the Oracle, he is closest to Yakuts. Uh, once again, similar to the previous uh, previous Oracle result too. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Yevank plus Kyrgyz or Yevank plus Kazakh. And Yevanks, in case you don't know, are Arctic people of Siberia living kind of similar in terms of location to where this individual is from. Now, this is what he scores with um, official G25, which is kind of surprising because he's very extremely close to modern Yakuts. And this individual is living 300 miles north of the Arctic Circle, whereas Yakuts are like 600 miles south of the Arctic Circle, so he's much more northern than Yakuts. 
However, he does resemble Yakuts in terms of modern populations the most. And relative to the Yevenks, I just wanted to model do this model here because he was scoring Yevenk plus some kind of Central Asian populations previously. Relative to the Yevenks, he actually does have a Central Asian kind of shift. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. As you can see, he's scoring mostly East Asian. However, there is a little bit of Ancestral North Eurasian here too, and even Natufian. I'm not sure how Natufian ancestry has found its way into 71 degrees north. It's very uh, surprising and impressive. Uh, with the Oracle, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Nanganasan plus Moroccan or Algerian. And with Gedrosia K3, uh, he's 85% East Eurasian, mostly East Asian, but there is that 12% uh, West Eurasian admixture too. So anyway, what did you guys think of this Hyperborean man? Do you think I missed something that's important? Or perhaps you want to add something? Add it in the comments. You can download the raw data file for this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.